everybody this is example number six in the structural dynamics section the problem statement that we have is for the steel shear frame structure determine the natural circular frequency the natural frequency and the period of vibrations for oscillation in the horizontal direction the horizontal girder on top supports a dead weight of 30 kips uniformly distributed along its length Assume that the horizontal girder to be infinitely rigid with respect to the columns and neglect the mass of the columns that bend about their strong axis. So here's our figure over here. We have this shear frame structure. And uh, here's, our, here's our top girder, assumed to be rigid. And we have three columns. The outer ones, the outer two are W8 by 24, W8 by 24, and the middle column is W10 by 33. And the length of these columns is 10 feet. And they're pinned at their supports over here. It's pinned at all three locations. So the first thing we need to do is get the section properties for the W8 by 24 and W10 by 33. And the section property that we need is the second moment of inertia. So you can get that from the steel manual. So for W8 by 24, the second moment of inertia is 82.8 .8 inches to the fourth power. And for, for W10 by 33, the second moment of inertia is 170 inches, inches to the fourth power. And E for steel, the Young's modulus is 29,000 KSI. The next step will be to calculate the individual stiffness for each column. So, so in our case, we have two columns that have uh, the same section properties and one that has se separate section properties. We have two columns that are W8 by 24 and one that's W10 by 33. So the stiffness for that W8 by 24 column will be 3 times E times I divided by L cubed and since we have two of these uh, W8 by 24 we multiply it by 2 and so we won't go into how these stiffnesses were evaluated but these can be evaluated so just plug in the numbers 3 times 29,000 KSI times the moment of inertia for W8 by 24 is 82.8 .8 inches to the fourth power multiply by number this is num uh, number of columns 2 number of columns that are W8 by 24 and then divided by L cubed so we have 10 feet and then we have to convert it into inches so we multiply it by 12 and this whole quantity is to the th uh, third power so this gives us the stiffness for the W8 by 24 columns, two of them, is 8.3375 kips per inch. So we've calculated the stiffness for two columns, and we still have to calculate the stiffness for the W10 by 33. And again, since it's a pin pin support at the end, it's the same, the, the expression is the same. If, if, since it's pin supported, 3 times EI times L cubed. If it was some other support condition like fixed, this would be a different uh, expression. So we just plug in the numbers, 3 times 29,000 KSI times the second moment of inertia, which is 170 inches to the fourth power. And in this case, we're not going to multiply by 2. We just multiply by 1. It's already assumed there since there's only one column. One column that's W10 by 33. And then we divide by the length. And we get... 8.5590 kips per inch. So what we calculated was the transverse stiffness of the of these uh, columns uh, in the horizontal direction. And this is the expression when they're pinned. It's three times EI divided by L cubed. That's the expression for the transverse stiffness for the in the horizontal direction. Once we have the individual stiffnesses for the columns we have to calculate the equivalent stiffness. So these three columns represent springs in parallel. So when you have springs in parallel, you simply just add the stiffnesses. So here's our expression for K equivalent over here. We just take the summation of the stiffnesses. So we add K1, 
which is for the W8 by 24, plus we add K2, which represents the stiffness for W10 by 33. So we just add them together, 8.3375 plus 8.5590 kips per inch, and we get 16.8965 kips per inch. Once we have the equivalent stiffness, we need to calculate the mass. And the mass is, we're talking about the, the weight that the girder is supporting. So the girder is supporting a, a weight of 30 kips, which is uniformly distributed. So to get mass, we just take that weight and divide it by the gravi gravitational acceleration, which is 32.2 feet per second squared. And then we multiply it by 12 to get it into inches. So the mass is 0 0.0776 kip second squared over inch. So we got, we've calculated our mass, we've calculated our equivalent stiffness. So now what remains is to, now we can easily calculate the circular natural frequency omega, and that's equal to the square root of your equivalent stiffness divided by the mass. So we just plug in the number, 16.8965 divided by 0 0.0776, and this gives us 14.7522 radians per second. Once we have the natural circular frequency, we can calculate the natural frequency, which is equal to F equals to omega divided by 2 pi. Just plug in the numbers, 14.7522 radians per second divided by 2 pi and this gives us 2.3479 hertz and finally we can calculate our period which is just going to be the inverse of the natural frequency so the period t is equal to 1 divided by the natural frequency so 1 divided by 2.3479 hertz this gives us point uh, this gives us a period of 0 0.4259 seconds. So this is the end of example number six. Thanks.